Good morning. Um, yesterday, I was having a discussion with some folks about the difference between grow and real conversations. And I wanted to bring that up real quick because it was a coaching conversation where I was giving uh, advice and a little bit of coaching to some leaders at a company <clears throat> where they have an opportunity to uh, dramatically improve the performance of their their uh, sales and operations. And the the idea behind the acronym GROW of goals, reality, options, or obstacles, or opportunities, and then the way forward, the idea behind that is simply put that you, uh, you're in a business context, so you're going to ask information of that particular person and have a level setting conversation with them about their performance and whatever, you know, key performance indicators or KPIs they have to achieve in, in, in their job, on their role, in their business unit, whatever the case is. Okay. However, it's again, very money number and metrics oriented. It is not reality. People make decisions based on emotion. They do not make decisions based on logic. Right. So I created something I call real conversations, which is reality, expectation, adversity, and looking forward. And the concept of it very, very succinctly is when you are having a conversation with someone, what is the reality they're dealing with first? Because that's where the emotion is. Then, when appropriate, transition over to expectations. So that's where you're talking about money, number, metrics, or whatever the performance is. And then you're looking at what hurdles are in their way, what do you as the leader need to get out of their way, and what do you need to help them overcome themselves. That's the adversity. And then looking forward, of course, is long-term, medium-term, short-term, what are we trying to accomplish? That's it. It's really straightforward. Now, how to execute that, especially when your temperament or your personality style is not that way, is challenging, okay? Especially if you're a dad or a mom and you're dealing with you're a one, three, seven, 15 year old. And at every stage of life, they're different. You have to learn how to bob and weave with that. And you oftentimes are not going to know. You might think you know, but you are not going to know what's going on in their life as your kid. They're not telling you stuff. They're not telling you stuff in part because you didn't lay the foundation for them to be able to tell you stuff. They're not telling you stuff in part because you're not cool. And every other reason under the book or under the sun. Wow. Every other reason in the book under the sun. Hang on. Coffee. <laughs> I'm ensuring that my brain is sufficiently lubricated with the appropriate clinical levels of caffeination. All right. Um, so. I was watching some information from Gary Vaynerchuk. And in his talk, in his conversation, he was discussing having zero expectations of people. He said zero expectations. If you have expectations of people, you are setting yourself up for disappointment, potentially setting yourself up for failure. So what do you do? Hold zero expectations, let them have free will. And if they're motivated to do it, they're going to do it. Now, of course, that doesn't work on a job, which is what I was doing yesterday when I was teaching these folks about my methodology. However, the, the simple, straightforward answer is zero expectations allows them to have free will. So free will, which is generally either because of somebody's love and therefore commitment to something, or Simply put, it's in their best interest and they're doing what is in their best interest. All right. You're going to get a certain level of performance out of that. Usually the minimum, but you will. You as dad, you need to commit 100%. Period. Great dads commit 100%. It's a mantra we have. It's truth. All right. It's, dad quote of the day is about celebrating great dads. Great dads commit 100%. That does not mean that there are not times when your 100% is 60% of what you could normally do on an average day. It also doesn't mean that 100% is 125% on an, any other given day. Stuff happens. We ebb, we flow, we have emotional trauma, we have emotional strength. We have physical trauma, 
we have physical strength. Financial trauma, financial strength. Life ebbs and flows, all right? To that point, Sean Whalen, founder of Lions Not Cheap, freaking amazing. There is no way on earth he would need my affirmation or my, you know, statements that I'm about to make. But what he did with so making a business decision to support his employees and to keep them working, to take care of them and their families by paying an egregious fine to a government bureaucracy um, is amazing. And the reason he did that was very simple because he's committed to his people and he's committed to a message and he's committed to a mission and a movement to get men and uh, people in general to level up and to get their house in order. And I saw this video about the the business environment he's been working in and the goals he's been achieving and how he did such an amazing job to do that. And guess what? They came after him. And, well, okay. But he's not, it's not a pity party. It's just a fact and he's dealing with it. And, and man, it, he's the dude. Okay. He is absolutely fantastic, but he did not have any expectation one way or the other, right? His advisors, his lawyers, etc., said, do this, do this, do this. And then they also gave him the reality and he dealt with it. All right. So as I was reflecting on, um, you know, Myself this morning, I was talking to um, my daughter uh, and she went and, uh, you know, we're getting ready for school to start back up in a month, less than a month, about three weeks. She has to catch a bus at a different time than her sister because they go to different schools. She was up already this morning at the appropriate time to get everything she needs to get done, done. She took responsibility, she hit it, and bam, bullseye, right? And that is typically her nature. I don't have an expectation that she's going to do less. But if she does less, I have the expectation of myself that I'm going to go in there and say, hey, honey, get up. Okay, let's get ready. Because, again, she ebbs and flows, just like I do, just like anybody else does. All right. Now. So 1 Corinthians 12, and I wanted to start at uh, 23 and read a couple of scriptures here, a couple of verses, because I think it helps to make the point about expectation and where we are and how we support each other. So and the, uh, starting at 23, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we, bes we bestow more abundant honor and our less presentable members become much more presentable whereas our more presentable members have no need of it but god has so composed the body giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked so that, that there may be no division in the body but that the members may have the same care one for another and one and if one member suffers all the members suffer uh, with it and if one member is honored all the members rejoice with it all right so you have expectations on a job. You have to hit your key performance indicators, whatever those happen to be, for your role. Okay? If you are a retail employee, your key performance indicator might be good customer service and make sure you ring up every single item going across the scanner or you have a truck to empty, get it high load and load it onto the, the, the racking in the warehouse, whatever the case is. That might be yours. If you're the CFO, you've got Sarbanes-Oxley and everything else that they're throwing down at you. And, you know, so you have definitely different key performance indicators. All right. However, it said honorable and presentable. There are two different standards, honorable and presentable. There were some that were less honorable we needed to bestow more honor because for those that are less presentable, 
they typically receive less honor. But in point of fact, we need to honor them more in order to lift them up, right? So Sean doesn't need me saying anything about him, not at all. But I honor him, not because of anything other than the fact that he's what he's done is worthy of honor. I honor my daughter, not because of any other fact than she's worthy of honor. What she did was right. Okay? So giving honor where honor is due is super important. And it is the right thing to do. Okay? Um, the divisions that we have frequently are caused by hurt, pain, expectations of others. Don't have the expectations of others. If you are dealing with something that is uh, specific to another individual where they have directly hurt you and you're getting it from the horse's mouth, you're not getting information third party or third hand. You're not getting information that's been filtered through somebody else's paradigm whether or you know bias where they're trying to blindside you with something or they don't like someone for whatever reason and they're trolling them you know what screw it get the information directly from the horse's mouth and move on all right if these people aren't impacting your life directly it doesn't matter they're a waste of your time and effort and energy all right don't be someone like some of these weak you know, soggy pasta headed folks that are following all of these entertainers. I'm sorry. You know, Hollywood is Holly weird and they don't need us and we don't need them. We need creative people that are willing to contribute good things. We don't need people that are willing to support all kinds of nasty stuff. So what do you do? All right. Level yourself up. If honor where honor is due, have zero expectations so that you know when you're working on something that you are responsible for what it is. And if somebody is not providing the service or the product that you need, find somebody else. Don't stay married to them, so to speak, because, hey, we got to get our stuff done. All right. Uh, this world is turning really dark and it's only getting worse. And so we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves as dad and as mom and that our kids are prepared for what this world has in store for them. All right. So on this happy and cheerful morning, let me bless you and send you on your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless all the moms, dads, and kids that watch these podcasts and listen to them. Lord, I thank you for how you have grown us, grown our audience. And I thank you for the blessings that these folks instill, or I shouldn't say instill, but bestow upon us with their comments, their likes, their shares. It's it's fantastic, and it's much appreciated. Lord, give them grace today. Give them strength. Give them wisdom, and drive purpose and intention deep in their hearts that they may move forward in difficult and troubling times. Strengthen their spines and stiffen their resolve. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Listen, it's great to see you. Thanks very much. I appreciate sincerely every like, share, and telling your friends about this, and every comment, every email. You guys are fantastic, and I'm grateful. This uh, podcast is sponsored by Dad Quote of the Day, and if you see something that you like on our website, we appreciate you helping us in our efforts to support families that are confronting homelessness. Uh, you know, you guys are fantastic in your generosity. So, thanks and take care. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.